Back to basics detoxification. Boy, well that word detoxification conjures up a whole lot of thoughts. Coffee enemas, hydrotherapy, colon hydrotherapy, um, doing um, you know umpteenth days of fasting. No, we're just going to talk about a back to basics detoxification approach. A couple of thoughts in a minute that I'll answer. Why should we? Do we have to? Is it necessary? Oh, I think so. Uh, the way we eat, uh, we eat a tremendous amount of processed foods. There are so many chemicals in the foods in the way of pesticides and herbicides that we consume. We accumulate it in our adipose tissue, our fatty tissue. We accumulate it in our nerve, neurologic tissue. Is it necessary? Clearly, yes. We consume heavy metals, metals uh, that are, in, a lot of the pesticides um, have, have arsenite, uh, arsenic in them. Um, they're made with an arsenic base. Not only do they have neurologically damaging types of components, but they're made with metals in some cases. So, um, if you viewed our past videos, how do you spell heartburn relief? How do you spell insomnia relief? How do you spell fatigue relief? We've taken a lot of different areas of just functional, um, dysfunctional would be a better word, areas of how our bodies are, are not working for us. Right now, I wouldn't want to just take a very, very basic approach to how do you clean up? How do you detoxify without spending a lot of money, uh, without maybe using supplementation? Do you have to fast? You certainly can. But some of you might say, well, I can't do that, but I don't even know where to begin. What would I do? And that's what we're here for today. Hopefully, uh, by the time this video is aired, we'll have some written material and some hints and some cues and some tips that you could follow along with. Um, if you're attempting to write and take some notes here, we should have some written material that's available with you here. Where do we start? Well, I I'm going to tell you that maybe four to seven days. Four to seven days. I don't think we have to do an extended period of time. Uh, I'm going to give you the do's and don'ts, but we'll start with the do's for right now. Plenty of fruits during the whole time, but especially the first couple of days. You have an ulterior motive. Apples, pears, foods that contain a lot of pectin, a lot of fiber that absorb toxins from the intestinal tract, and they aid elimination and evacuation. If you can get organic ones, preferably, that would be helpful. Many folks in a detox diet tell you not to do citrus. I'm going to tell you that I want you to. Grapefruit, oranges, and fresh squeezed lemon in water a couple times a day before you eat to stimulate your liver and your liver activity. Um, the, the, the fruit scenario becomes a, a little bit of an issue for a lot of folks I mean, if you're a diabetic or if you have blood sugar issue because of the high amount of fructose. For right now, if you do not have those scenarios, I'm going to tell you, go full bore. I'm not worried about it. If you do, that becomes a little bit of a different issue. You have to make sure um, that you balance that off with either your medication use, your testing, your blood sugars, et cetera, because it will probably spike your blood sugars. We're after detoxification, the basics here right now. Does that mean you don't do protein and vegetables during the first uh, couple of days? No, you're going to do plenty of vegetables, and I'm going to give you some options for protein, and then I'm going to give you some um, alternative options, things that you can make sure you add in that help you get through the day. All right, fruits. We've covered fruits. Um, apples, pears. I'm even going to throw in peaches, mango, apricots, grapefruit. I'm even going to throw in some avocados. Avocados, a lot of monounsaturated fats. It'll stabilize your blood sugar very rich in certain nutrients that are good for detoxification. Just a nice little array. Doesn't mean you can't do blueberries and blackberries and mulberries or whatever. I'm fine with that. Frozen is fine, preferably organic if you're out of season. Vegetables. Let's move on to the vegetables. I have them broken up into a couple areas and there's a reason because some of them really aid your liver's detoxification capabilities. Um, the brassica family, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, indole carbonyls, um, isothiocyanates, um, they help the body do the work of detoxification through the liver. They aid the liver's ability to conjugate, glucuronidate, a lot of fancy terminology. It aids, this is no, this is not smoke and mirrors. There are certain foods and nutrients, 
amino acids that aid the liver's ability to do the work of detoxification. Um, kale, spinach, endive, we want to make sure that we make this a part. Why? Very rich in minerals, very rich in iron, very rich in potassium, magnesium, um, just um, fibrous, uh, just a good nutrient base that should always be in your diet, but great when you're doing some work of detoxification. Next, onion, garlic, if you're okay with that, um, at a minimum, artichokes. Why? Um, these compounds are very, very good, especially artichokes. It aids the liver and bile, B-I-L-E, production from the liver and the gallbladder. It's a secretagogue. It stimulates bile production. You try to make asper or excuse me, uh, artichokes a part of this. Asparagus is a great food stuff. That you can broil these, put some olive oil on them, um, garnish them with some pepper and salt. Great food stuff. AIDS detoxification, and one of the vehicles is renal through your kidneys, through your renal system. Asparagus is a great food for the kidneys. Red, green lettuce have to be a part. Red and green lettuce have to be a part of what you're doing. Make a big salad, cut some hard boiled eggs, salt, pepper, olive oil, vinegar, great ways, great tools. So, so far we have a lot of fruits in the first two days aid bio elimination and evacuation. Do you do that mutually exclusively? No vegetables? Absolutely not. You're still going to do some vegetables. You can start to taper down the fruit. Now enters a lot of vegetables. Remember, we're doing four to seven days. If you can only do four days, fine. If you can do five or six, dynamite. If you can do a full week, that is terrific. Let's keep going. Um, how do you make these? I may have already mentioned if I haven't steamed the vegetables, stir fry the vegetables with a little bit of olive oil, I'm okay with lightly cooking them or lightly steaming them. As many raw as you can, I would rather you do that. Cut up some red pepper, yellow pepper, carrots, celery as snacks. Dip them in a little bit of nut butter, maybe an almond butter. Many would disagree with me on that. Don't do nut butters during detox protocols. Uh, no, I, I want to create a program here that, that is a quick, jumpstart detox that you can do, not feel like you're starving, that helps you to clean up. Dip those cut uh, vegetables in some nut butters. Okay, we've covered fruit. Well, first we've covered should we, do we need to? That's an absolute unequivocal yes. The role of fruit, what types of fruits, why? The role of vegetables, why? And I didn't get, certainly there are other vegetables, but I gave you a nice, um, I, I think a nice, um, smattering of vegetables to consider. Let's move into now the proteins. What types of proteins? I'm going to start with the hierarchy where I'd rather you be. Preferably fish, rich in omegas, cold water, out at sea, freshly or wild caught. That could be salmon, that could be tilapia, that could be any of the white fishes. They're easy to digest. They're rich in amino acids, proteins. They are um, very bioavailable, very easily extracted amino acids from those sources of protein. Your body doesn't have to work real, real hard. High uh, protein coefficient in fish, especially the white fish, and eggs, organic, preferably. No farm-raised fish, let's, and, and let's, try to, let's try to stay away from that. Um, broil them, garnish with, 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 uh, with a little bit of olive oil, pepper, and salt once again, or other spices not accents or some bizarre mixture of, no, real spices and herbs. Other types of meats, you can. Lamb is a pretty clean source of meat, maybe a little bit of organic beef. I would rather you in this seven days, fish, chicken, eggs, you have plenty of options. What about your don'ts? This gets to the tough part. The last two areas, what do we want to stay away from? And then what are some other snack or supportive options that you could use. Number one, no alcohol, no dairy, no sugar, no white, no refined flours. So that hits a big area. Sugar, white flours, processed types of components, alcohol, and dairy. I would want you to get away from dairy, processed cheeses, sprinkled cheeses, no cheese on a sandwich. You're not eating cold cuts, they're out. If you want to uh, broil some chicken breast, slice that chicken breast down, 
throw it over a bed of greens with a, some cut up eggs in it, go for it, that's fine. Remember, this is not forever. This is for a short period of time. No dairy, no alcohol, no sugar, no white, no refined, no prepared, no processed types of foods, nothing that's prepackaged, no corn. That covers a lot. Don't want to forget, no ketchups, no barbecue sauces, none of those condiments. I'm okay with some mustard. If you want to put some mustard on something, really don't feel that as that big of a deal. But if you really look at ketchups, sauces, barbecued sauces, many of these condiments are loaded with sugars, a lot of preservatives, lots of chemicals. Remember, the one area that we want to get away from, not that there's something magical in this, it's about getting away from prefabricated foods or foods that are prefab that have a lot of chemicals, a lot of preservatives, colors and dyes, and a lot of sugar. We want to get rid of it. What are some helpful support vehicles during this time? What are some foods that you can add in? You say, gosh, we've talked about fruit, we've talked about vegetable, you've given me a couple of options with, with proteins, what else can I do? You mean that's it for seven days? Here's your other options. How about some organic, or at least at a minimum, steel cut oats, Irish oats for breakfast. Put some cinnamon on that. Maybe a little bit of honey or stevia or brown rice syrup. That's an option. How about some quinoa? You can use quinoa in the morning and breakfast. Um, you can use it as a side. It's technically not really a grain. It's more of a seed. There, it's very rich in fiber. It's very rich in protein, very rich in minerals. We have it up on our blog site. My daughter put up a nice blog site. Mary did a, a nice little, um, some printed material that you can go look at that is great about the benefits of quinoa. So use quinoa. How about a sweet potato with that dinner? Baked piece of fish or chicken, big mixed green salad, maybe some steamed asparagus, and um, how about a sweet potato? We're okay with that. You're getting colors. You're getting another alternative source of carbohydrate and a rich source of nutrients. I'm going to say raw nuts, almonds, cashew, filbert nuts, fine, okay. Maybe have them with some apples or some fruit. You should be doing a ton of apples and pears during this. A lot of soluble fiber, just a lot of pectin, just absorbs a lot of toxic remnants from the, from the intestinal tract. Remember, if you can on those fruits, preferably organic if possible. Edamame. A lot of people say, oh my gosh, do not do soy during a detox. I am not uh, down on soy. If it's genetically modified sources of soy, I have a problem with that. Non-GMO sources of soy, edamame, great sources of protein, helps your blood sugars, lowers your LDLs, raises your HDLs, great for your cardiovascular system, very clean, no harsh, horrible types of fats, why not steam some edamame? Raw nuts, quinoa, steel cut oats, preferably organic, and I would say, how about some almond butter, fresh ground almond butter, nothing added to it, and you can dip some of those vegetables and so on, even some sliced apples. So what's the theme? No process, no dairy, no alcohol, no chemicals, no condiments, lots of vegetables for the whole seven days, preferably more fruit in the first couple days, then go more balanced. I don't want you eating a bag of apples a day. Um, then um, th also through that whole course of that seven days, quality sources of protein. We've defined them for you. The main thrust is real foods, live foods, no chemicals, no process, minimal sugars, four to seven days. If you could only do four days, I will tell you this will help you. If you can do five or six or seven, this will help you. If you can do a week, that's phenomenal. This would be great after holiday seasons, coming off of a winter, post, you know, holidays, Christmas, Easter's, where maybe you've consumed a lot of sugars, um, a lot of foods that have very little in the way of fibers. Uh, many of you need to evacuate and clean up just a lot of toxic remnants from the, and how many of the, uh, of the baked goods that we consume in and around holidays have a lot of other chemicals and colors and, and just a lot of things that we just absolutely do not need. Back to the basics, a back to the basics detox. This can jumpstart a weight loss program. This can just get you cleaned up, get you thinking clear, just feeling better, 
and really could be a springboard to a whole new Vista, which we hope to present to you over some ensuing videos on a back to basics diet, back to basics of exercise, just as a follow up to improving your sleep, improving your energy, improving your digestion, all in a health series of some back to basics and how do you spell relief. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in and uh, make sure you take a look at the support uh, writings that we have for you. Stay tuned for the next video. See you soon.